Well, hello and welcome to my garden. It's a beautiful morning in early summer. The sun's shining. It's a beautiful temperature. The birds are chirping in the trees. Butterflies and pollinating insects are flitting about all over the place. And it's really just a joy to be outside here in my own garden. And one of the plants that is really putting on a very good show right now is this beautiful little dwarf Doutzia. This is Doutzia Nico. And I just love it. It's hardy, easy to grow, deer don't bother with it, and as well as growing in full sunlight right out in the front of our house, also take a look at it here, underneath a large tree where it's shady, and there's a lot of competition from the tree roots, which makes it dry in the summertime. And yet, while it's not quite as prosperous as other parts in the garden, it's still growing and putting on a good show. And here on the north side of our house, which gets very cold and shady also, look at it. Just look how beautiful it is. And while it's very impressive in those locations, look what happens to it when you plant it in a mass display. When you're able to take plants and put them in at about three foot centers, then you can look forward to all of this type of display each and every year. Now, as impressive as it is, and it certainly is with all this lovely cascading habit of pure white pristine flowers that lightens up the whole garden, there is a little trick, something that you can do that will make sure that you get the very best from it each and every year. Let me show you what I mean. And here's what I wanted to show you. As soon as they finish flowering, you can go in with a pair of pruners and you cut them back by about half. You remove all of these old flowering shoots. You'll see here's the remains of the flowers here. And when you do that, that will encourage young fresh growth that will come up during the rest of the summer and they of course are the ones that are going to set the flower bud for next spring. It'll also help to make your plants be nice and bushy and healthy and compact and shapely too. So a lot of this old growth that's on here is now full of seeds and you really don't need that. What we want is plenty of young fresh growth that's going to grow out and of course set lots of flower buds that then next year is going to be laden with lots of glorious white flowers. Now it might seem that it's quite drastic going in and cutting back all this strong healthy growth that's on here but really you're doing good for the plant. Now, if you've got an older plant like this one that has now been here for getting on for nearly 20 years, you might find that it's got some old woody stalks down inside the bush. In which case then, with a good pair of pruners, you can go in and shorten back some of the older shoots too. It's a matter of reaching in there and cutting those back harder because then what happens is that you'll encourage some young shoots from deep inside the plant which will then of course keep it renewed and growing strongly inside the plant and it'll help to get rid of some of the congested growth that builds up over time. So then it's just really a matter of working your way around the plant, shortening back the growth, taking it out by about half as you see, and then you're going to have a nice, well-shaped and glorious plant next year. Now you might think this a bit drastic, especially when you see the amount of prunings that I've taken off. But when you remember that all of the new growth that's going to come out from here, that's going to grow out this summer, will all have flower buds on it, I think you can see that by pruning it fairly hard, you're going to generate lots of growth, which then will carry lots of flowers next spring. Now, when you get to this stage, and you see I've reduced the bushes here by about half, you can go in again 
and if there's any crossing branches that are in here you'll find them a little easier to take out. It is important to try and keep the center of the plant nice and open so that you get air movement inside the main framework of the plant. But now that I've gone through and removed half of it, it's really just a matter of tidying up with a rake, catching any of the last minute debris that's on here and tidying it up. And then if you wish, you can go through and put down a little bit of fertilizer. Now I'm just using a well-balanced fertilizer here. It happens to be a slow-release fertilizer and I put on about a handful or so per plant. So now you know how you can get lots of gorgeous flowers on your Doutsia Nico. And of course, if you've got larger areas to do like I've got here, then you can speed things up a good deal with some mechanization. Now, if you employ this method, then I recommend that when you're finished you go back in with a pair of pruners and trim out some of the older congested shoots because over the years if you keep doing it this way you'll find that you'll build up a network, a framework of really congested growth. So it's good to go in with the pruners and open that up a little bit and encourage some young fresh growth to come out from lower down. Now the same applies to lots of other spring flowering shrubs too. But the thing I want to mention is that you don't have to prune. But if you decide to prune them, you usually do it first of all to really enhance the flowering. The second of course will be to keep them perhaps extra bushy and compact. And the third reason is to make them nice and vigorous and keep plenty of renewal growth coming in. So. <laughs> Whether you do it or not is up to you, but I hope you can see that by pruning early season flowering shrubs like this, after they finish flowering, you can achieve some wonderful results. This is David Wilson. Enjoy your gardening. It's good for us and it's very good for our environment too.